Have you been finding it difficult to figure out how to start working with deities? Well, after today's video, you will not be able to say that anymore. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Lunar Witch. Today we are going to be talking about how to start working with deities. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to probably ask me like where is the other videos for the deities. They will come out. I am having a very, and again, as a creator, I like to really pay attention to what people are saying. There is a lot of people that I have noticed that don't know how to work with deities just yet or have zero idea how to start working with deities. Now normally what I usually do is I'll go out onto YouTube and kind of see like if there's videos out there maybe something I can kind of point people into the right direction of because usually there is really good information out there on how to start working with deities and things like that but when I went onto YouTube and kind of looked around not really I can't find things that actually see like my thing is and this is something that really bothers me when it comes to deity work is you can't overly explain something you have to legitimately simplify deity work and it is easy to simplify deity work for people to sit here that tell me or try to tell people like you can't simplify things if you simplify things and you don't say it the right way you're gonna leave out information no you're not you're not. You can simplify things in a way that makes it very easy for somebody to understand and make them and un understand all the information that needs to be given. A lot of people like to explain deity work and then give you this plethora of other information afterwards, which is pretty much snuffing out the actual information you need to know. So this video today is going to be strictly focused on how to start working with deities in the most easy basic ways possible to start working with them. And literally, these are the easiest basic ways to start working with them. And I want to make sure that everybody knows it because it really is a simple start to working with deities. And the issue, that, like I said, that I have is a lot of people try to make it out to be this extremely difficult, crazy thing. It's not crazy. It's really not. It's actually really easy. So let's get into the steps as to how to start your deity work. Step one, and this is something that a lot of people don't even explain. This is actually something that I saw in maybe a uh, couple videos when I was looking on YouTube seeing if other creators actually put this in there. There's not a lot of people that put this in there. This should be the number one thing that you tell people. The choice is yours. You have the choice to work with deities or not work with deities. If you don't want to work with deities, that is your choice. If a deity is calling out to you, that is your choice if you want to work with that deity or not. You do not have to work with deities. That is your choice. And quite honestly, telling them no, telling a deity no that you don't want to work with them is not going to harm or affect you in any way, shape, or form. That is your decision. Deities understand that it is your decision if you want to work with them or not. So you have the actual choice on if you want to start deity work or not. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're in the video is being called how to start working with deities. You want to work with deities. So you're here wanting to work with deities. That is your choice. But commenters and creators really need to kind of put that out there and understand that it is a choice. Just because they're calling out to you doesn't mean you have to work with them. So understand that step one is the choice that you make in order to work with deities or not. You don't have to do it if they're calling out to you. You don't have to do it in general. So number one, step one is the choice. So for step number two, we are going to be talking about finding a space for your deity. Now that obviously after your choice and choosing to be with the deity, the choice of saying, yeah, I want to work with the deity now comes with the, okay, so where am I going to put this deity in my place? Now you got to understand, Think about places that people, if you have a lot of company coming over and you don't want this to be out in front of people because you don't want people that don't believe in this stuff touching your altar, taking offerings off of there and doing things like that. You want to have this altar in a space where it can be respected, in a space that is clean, in a space that is quiet. You want to have it in a spot that is respectable for that deity. You gotta remember, these are divine beings. So if you can actually sit here and respect them enough to give them a clean, quiet space, this may even help with your connection with that deity and starting to work with them. So like I said, for number two, finding a space is really important because you definitely do wanna have that space for the deity to feel comfortable, especially since you are inviting them into your home to work with you. 
So for step three, I explained this a little bit in step two, but I wanted to actually make this a step because I want people to know the importance of this, cleaning the altar. That is huge, it really is. I mentioned it in step two, I really need to mention it one more time. Cleaning that altar is really, really big and make sure you're, like, you're maintaining it. I'm not saying like every single day, go get a duster and some Lysol and clean it down, right? But like me, for instance, Anubis likes me to do my spell work and things on his altar. So when I do that, that altar gets dirty as time goes on with ashes coming out of the cauldron, with incense getting lit and all that kind of stuff. After like three, four or five days, there's a lot of ash and stuff, a lot of dust all over that and it collects on the crystals. So take the time to clean your altar, especially if you were doing spell work on your altar. You want to make sure that you at least take every couple days to look at your altar, see if it's actually clean or not. If it's not, just take a second to dust it down, take the crystals, wipe them off, and so on and so forth. But you need to understand too that certain crystals cannot go underwater, so just make sure that before you do anything with washing crystals that the crystal you are putting underwater or wiping down with whatever substance that you're wiping it down with can be wiped down with that liquid substance because certain crystals will disintegrate underwater. Now after all all of those steps specifically we're moving on to step four which is as simple as just placing the altar down now that you got the area now that you know where it's gonna go now that you know that it has to be cleaned now is the time to place down the altar this is the time to start building now a lot of people always ask me how to start building an altar I always tell people to start small altars do not have to be these big like eccentric things like they don't have to be that way right off the bat if you have the money for it and you want to go out and do that sure absolutely if that's what you want to do go for it but deities don't mind when you start out slow my Anubis altar which I'll put a picture of it right here you can see it didn't look like that when I first started it when I first had my Anubis altar I had the uh, I had the two black um, shelves that I stacked on top of each other I super glued those together and then I took the gold tinseling that you see on there and I had the statue and a few crystals and candles that's it that's all I had for the start of it now I have all of that stuff that you saw in that picture I put to the right and that was over time. It doesn't matter if it takes you a long time to create the altar. The fact of the matter is the effort that goes behind it. What do I mean by that too? The deity likes to see that you are at least making an effort in creating the altar and trying to maintain the space. You don't always need an offering, but an offering that I always suggest for people whenever you are doing things when working with deities are going to be crystals and incense. Crystals can stay on the altar forever, and you know, all you gotta do is just take them off and dust them, and that's really it. And clean them underwater if they're allowed to be, you know, cleaned underwater and so on and so forth. But, you know, at the same time too, with things like incense, incense are really good offerings as well. And if you can find a scent that has to deal with that, like for instance, Anubis and Egyptian musk, mix very well. Or Artemis and Moonflower mix very well. Or Artemis and Mugwort, they also mix very well. So this is why I'm saying these are incense offerings that you can always put on there. It doesn't have to be every day, it could be every other day. I do it every day because you get like 120 incense in these boxes that I find, so it really doesn't bother me to put an incense on there every day, you know what I mean? But if you can't do that every day and you don't have the opportunity to feel safe about leaving that incense running and you have to leave, then just light it for like two, three minutes. I mean, it's again, a simple thing of just leaving an offering like that really means a lot to a deity. So for number four, like I said, placing down the altar and starting small is going to be really, really big. Placing down that altar and also knowing that you, can, that you should clean it and do things like that is also gonna be very beneficial for your start to deity work as well. One thing before I move on to the next step, I know this is a little redundant. I don't like to tell people this. Usually I don't tell people just go and research. I usually have places, but it's hard for me to point people where to go research because anybody that's watching this video right now might be working with a different type of deity. I have deity videos on here. If your deity's on there, I definitely do have information to help you start with working with them. But if I don't have that on here, just make a suggestion down below and I can maybe create one for you or like I said, it's gonna be a little redundant, but you might have to go research a little bit on the deity you wanna work with because of the fact that you're gonna to wanna to know exactly what crystal offerings you wanna give them, candle offerings and things like that. And a suggestion I can make to you guys too, if I don't have a deity video on them yet, because it does take me a little bit to get deity videos out there, I have to put a lot of research behind it too, especially if it's a deity I haven't worked with before, I really do gotta put a lot of research behind it. So if I don't have a video like that, just research things and make sure you are cross-referencing so that when you do play 
place it on that altar, you at least know you're placing the right thing. Like for Anubis, obsidians, pyrite, black candles, gold candles, these are really, really good for Anubis. I researched that, figured that out, but I also looked at three or four different things to make sure that that matched up with all the other things that I was seeing. So just don't look at one thing and think, oh, that's it, and put it on your altar. Make sure you are looking at different places so you can get the right things to put on your altar because that can really uh, mess up the connection between you and the deity if you are just placing things on there that the deity literally doesn't like at all. Which is a great segue into step five, which is leaving offerings for that deity. And as I said, good everyday offerings, herbs, crystals, incense, these are going to be really, really good offerings while starting to work with deities. Candles being one of the best things because all you have to do is light the candle for a little bit and let them know that you're just lighting the candle in respect to them. Even if it's for 5-10 minutes, that is still an offering. Lighting an incense is still an offering. Even if it's on for 5-10 minutes and you cut it off, that's still an offering. A crystal stays on there. That is an offering. So these are very easy, easy offerings that you can place to start with certain deities. Just like I said in step four, if I don't have the video on that deity, make sure you are researching and cross-referencing just to make sure you are putting the right offerings on that altar for the specific deity that you are trying to start working with. And moving on to the last and final step, and a lot of people, oh, last and final step. Yeah, it really is that easy to work with deities. This is why I keep telling people, you have to find the right people to talk about this stuff because it really is as simple as just explaining it in a real easy, basic way without running off on a bunch of stuff because once you run off you start to kind of snuff out all the major information you're trying to give people so this is why I'm trying to tell people last thing you want to do cleanse the area not just not just your altar the area in general your room that that altar is in cleanse it make sure anytime you use it anytime you leave an offering anytime you are done leaving those offerings things like that not every time you leave an offering but every time the offering is done or you like you know if you're putting an incense on there and you are contacting your deity in some way shape or form you want to cleanse that area keep your area cleansed make sure that you keep it you know positive vibes you can use palo santo palo santo is something that you use to get rid of negative energies in order to maintain positive energies sage gets rid of everything, neutralizes the area. If you want to neutralize your area, by all means, go for it. I like to use Palo Santo because of the fact that it gets rid of negative energies and maintains the positive energies within that room. Your deity being one of those positive energies, so your deity and its energy remains in that room with you. But guys, those are the six really easy steps on starting to work with deities. It really is that simple. And a lot of people might try to add things in and things like that. Don't. Don't add anything into what I'm saying. Seriously, I need you guys to look me in the eyes, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. Just understand, please. Do not veer off any of these steps. I, want, I let my actions speak for themselves. I let my words speak for themselves. If you guys just take those steps that I told you and start your deity work off that way, I promise you, you will have absolutely no problems whatsoever. The one thing I will warn you about before this video ends is no matter what, everybody is gonna have a different scenario. Even if they work with the same deity as you, I am not gonna have the same experiences with Anubis as somebody else is gonna have with Anubis. Why is that? Anubis is with me for completely different reasons than Anubis is with somebody else. You have to utilize your intuition and your things to realize and understand why that deity may be there with you. And with that, that is gonna be a whole different video on itself because that will take me hours to explain. And like I said, I am not gonna be one of those people to ramble random information and make you guys forget everything we just uh, went over and stuff like that. So with that being said, these six easy steps are the ones that you are going to want to follow. I really hope this video was helpful to those that are going to be starting to work with deity work. If it was helpful, make sure you leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below for either any deities you would like to see for a deity video, or if you just have any suggestions or comments about the video in general, please leave that down below too. I'd be more than happy to help anybody out or answer any questions that anybody has. And also, if you're new to this channel and you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, become part of the Lunar Witch family, and until next time, I will see you here on the Lunar Witch.